for joining me for today's video. In this one, we are looking at some autumn winter sewing patterns. I've got a big long list of everything you need to make a handmade autumn winter wardrobe. I'm gonna include lots of pictures to get you inspired because if you're anything like me, this is my least favorite season to sew for. I live for summer dresses and linens and florals and all the pretty stuff but I have managed to find some really, really good patterns that'll hopefully get you inspired if you feel the same as me and get you motivated to actually do a little bit of sewing this time of year. I've got big mix, I've got big four, I've got indie, and I've got some free patterns as well, which are so, so good. You will be blown away when you see them, because I sure was. Everything I can, I will link in the description box below and pop the size ranges down there too. But let's get straight into it. And we're gonna start with the most wintry thing on the list, which is coats and jackets. So first up for coats is this pattern here, which is the Simplicity 8797. This pattern has actually been recommended to me because apparently it's easy to make for a coat. We will see. We will see if they're lying or not when I make it. But it's got a really lovely oversized silhouette, big collar, and I love the different lengths as well. You could have the full, snuggly um, maxi coat, or you can have something a little bit shorter. I've seen lots of different versions of this in different fabrics. I've seen ones in like a really hairy faux fur. Um, I've seen some with like a contrast lining as well. So they've done a contrast collar and lining, um, which looks amazing. My inspiration for this pattern is an All Saints coat that I've had saved for a while. It's like a white and black check full length coat. It's really, really cool. And I've actually got some wool in my stash somewhere that will be absolutely perfect for recreating it. So I'm gonna make my first coat this year, I think. Next up is a little bit of a classic uh, style of coat. It's the trench coat. And this is a new pattern from McCall's. It's the M8246. I actually love the one that they've got on the front of the pattern in the check wall. I think that is super, super cool. You could do it in a sort of beige twill and recreate like the Burberry ones, which is such a staple. Or you could go for something a little bit more funky and do like a bright color. Maybe do it in like a viscose wool mix for when the weather's not so cold, but you need something to chuck on over in the mornings. But I love this. It's just got so many nice design details as well. Right, we've got a couple of free ones next, and these patterns are so cool. They are from the Mood Fabrics website, so they're a PDF download, so yeah, annoying. You do have to stick them together, but they're free patterns, so we can't complain too much, can we? So first up, we've got the Savannah Shacket, which is so, so cool. It's such a great pattern. Shackets have been coming back like year after year. It's basically a jacket that looks like a shirt. Um, I've seen some cool versions of this one in like flannels, um, which would be a little bit more lighter weight for when it's not so cold. Or you could go in and do it in like a lightweight wool so it's a bit warmer and a bit more of a coat feel. I've got some leopard wool in my stash actually. I'm gonna recreate another All Saints jacket that I've seen, um, but this time it's the jacket version. The one in the inspiration picture is quite short, but I think I'll probably do a little bit more of a mid eaton sort of mid axi if that's a word, length. Um, just because I wear a lot of dresses and stuff like that and I think it will look a lot better But I love this. I think it's such a staple and you just wear it year after year I love the big collar the big pockets on it I'll be honest I haven't checked the instructions yet because some of the mood fabrics patterns are known for having really really bad instructions So I will get back to you on those pattern. I could not get over when I saw this on the mood fabrics Instagram I screamed out loud. It is amazing. This is the Clark coat, which is the most incredible coat pattern I think I've ever seen. It is unbelievable. Probably far too cool for me, but I'm gonna try it anyway. It's just got the most amazing details, those huge balloon sleeves, the big statement collar, the oversized silhouette of it. How is this free? How is it free? I don't understand. So it's got a couple of pocket options. You can have welt pockets or patch pockets, whichever you prefer. And um, it's a really nice length as well. It's not too long, um, so not too overwhelming. In a high street coat, very, very similar in shape um, in a camel wool, which I thought was really nice because you still get the statement shapes of the coat without it being too much or you could go all out and make this in a really bright, bold color and really, really make a statement. I think that would be absolutely amazing. The size range, as always with Mood Fabrics patterns, is really, really good too. So this is just gonna be the most incredible winter coat for everybody. 
It wouldn't be an autumn winter patterns video without including a blazer because a blazer is a staple in most people's autumn winter wardrobe whether it's for work or whether you wear them sort of day to day. I do love a blazer and the one I'm going to chat about is the Nina Lee Richmond blazer. I bought this pattern I want to say three years ago now I'm embarrassed to say I bought it I downloaded it I even printed it out and that's as far as I got because the idea of making a blazer just seemed like far too much work for me I'm a very very lazy sewer but recently I've seen lots of versions popping up on Instagram and it's made me really inspired to make one myself I've got a relaxed silhouette so it's not hugely oversized um, but it's not super super fitted either so it's nice for slinging over lots of different things it's got notch lapels it's fully lined as well so you could go for a statement lining if you wanted to do something different it's got welt pockets with flaps too which is really nice for extra storage for all your bits and pieces it's a lovely length it's not too long so it kind of sits just under your bum but seen really really good reviews about this blazer so hopefully at some point i will stop being lazy and i will have a go at making it on to some knitwear next. So I've got cardigans and jumpers and sort of layering pieces as well. The first one I'm going to talk about is a pattern that I've made and I absolutely love. I could not rave about this one enough. It's the Valdivia sweater by Alyssa Threads. A couple of sleeve variations. So you've got the puff sleeve where you could have like a straighter um, finish on the arm. It's also got the bishop sleeve, so a lot more volume around here. You could have both, which is what I did on mine, for full volume. Not the most practical under a coat, but it looks amazing, so definitely worth sort of shoving it into your coat, in my opinion. It's got different lengths as well, so you can have the crop length, normal jumper length, or do a little mini dress as well. I think that's so, so cute. But yeah, I love this pattern. I made it in a cable knit from Higgs and Higgs and the amount of compliments I had on this jumper, I was over the moon. It was really snuggly and soft, that fabric as well. I would highly recommend it. But yeah, I love this pattern. I really wanna make another one in a different color, maybe without the balloon sleeve, so it's a little bit more practical, but I definitely still want the puff sleeve because it's just so, so cute. Another version of this I was thinking of was maybe like a velvet version or a glitter knit for kind of Christmas around that time. If you're not like a traditional Christmas jumper gal, that could be a good take on it where you have like a sheep version. Another freebie from Mood Next. There are gonna be quite a few of these in this video, sorry, but they are so good. This one is the Willow Cardigan, which is a long line cardigan with a facing around the neck. It's got big pockets on it and it's got little puffy sleeves as well with cuffs. It's really, really cute. I've got a couple of ready to wear cardigans like this that I've had for years because I wear dresses all year round. It's quite a good thing to chuck over dresses and then take off when it warms up eventually. You could make this in like a waffle knit or a mohair for something super, super snuggly or just a lightweight knit for throwing over dresses and things when it's not too, too cold. Or you could make this in a fleece. So you've almost got like a coatigan type thing. I love the look of those. I think they look really good. My mum made one last year actually, and that was amazing. And she wears it all the time. A Tilly Buttons pattern next. This is the Pearl Cardigan, which was released last winter, I believe. It's a really cute V-neck wrap cardigan. It kind of reminds me of one of those little ballerina cardigans. It's really, really sweet. There's a couple of sleeve options. So you've either got the balloon sleeve with a cuff, or you can have a straighter sleeve if you want to keep it quite simple. But it's really nice. It wraps around. It's a crop length, really perfect for layering over dresses or popping on with skirts or something like that. I've seen a version in a textured knit, which I thought was really, really nice. And I also thought you could do this in a cable knit, something a little bit warmer, a bit thicker, almost looks a bit like a jumper as well. But Tilly Buttons patterns are known for having really, really good instructions. So if you're a beginner and you're looking at doing some knitwear, um, this could be a really, really good one to start with. A couple more freebies next. These are both roll necks, which are an absolute essential in my autumn winter wardrobe, that's for sure, because I layer them under everything, dresses, and use them as an extra layer under jumpers and things like that. So there's a couple of different versions here. The first is the Tazuti Monroe roll neck, which is a little bit more of a relaxed feel. It's a bit more boxy in shape, oversized, um, it's got a drop shoulder as well, but straight sleeves. So that's really nice. I would say that's more of like a jumper than a base layer. And then the other one is the Mood Felicia, which is much more fitted. I would say this is much more of a base layer and a basic 
really good for sort of tucking into skirts and things like that, wearing underneath dresses, but both really good. The sizes are pretty limited on the Tazuti one, much better on the Mood one. On to bottoms next, and I'm gonna start off with another free pattern, which is absolutely incredible. I'm so, so chuffed that I found this. These are the Calamint Jeans by Mood Fabrics, another Mood Fabric, sorry. A really, really nice pair of relaxed, kind of mom style, high-waisted jeans with a straight leg. They're really, really nice. They've got pockets on the front and patch pockets on the bottom, belt loops, the nice top stitching as well. I have no idea what the instructions are gonna be like though. <laughs> So it might be worth doing a little bit of research before you dive into these. I am definitely going to have a go at making these. Um, in a previous video that I shared, I shared some inspiration for some pleated jeans and I've been dying to make some, but I've been really struggling in finding a pattern that I don't have to hack too much. And I think these are perfect. All I'm going to have to do is maybe add a little bit more around the waist and pop a pleat in, which is pretty simple to do, I think, I hope. So, so pleased that I found these so I can finally bring those jeans to life. Mood are absolutely killing it with their free patterns. I cannot get over it. Next up, we've got some trousers. These are the Vicky Sews Adeline trousers. They are so, so cool. I absolutely love these. I've seen loads of versions on Instagram. I fell in love with them. They've got a couple of big pleats down the front, inseam pockets, belt loops sort of a relaxed fit but because they're high-waisted they're not too oversized which is really trendy at the moment but not particularly a good look for me who has wide hips and a big bum they've got a really nice leg shape that kind of tapers in around the ankles as well but fly front and press creases at the front and back as well which i think makes them look so expensive i have these on my to sew list i'm probably going to make them pretty soon because i've got a teal twill fabric in my stash and i really love the version actually on the pattern itself so i want to try and recreate those but maybe make the leg part a little bit wider because i do like a wide leg trouser um but also i've had a dolce and gabbana leopard pair of trousers saved for ages and i do kind of want to recreate those as well because they're just insane up next, a pattern with possibly one of the cutest names ever. This is the Flirt Skirt by Gracie Steele. It is so high fashion. I mean, if you don't follow Gracie on Instagram, you so should, because she is the trendiest person ever. She can just pull off absolutely anything. But this skirt is amazing. It's got a couple of different yoke options. So there's six variations, I think, on the pattern. So you're getting a lot for your money. So two different yokes, one is kind of pointed into a V shape and one just kind of goes straight round, so sort of like a circle shape. Um, you've got a pleated version, a gathered version, and then like a circle skirt version as well. She made a denim version of like the midi one, the circle view, which was gorgeous. I absolutely love that and want it in my own wardrobe. So I'm definitely gonna have to copy her at some point. But I was also thinking how amazing would this pattern be in like a lightweight faux leather, the circle skirt version that is, I'm not going to attempt pleats in a faux leather, that's for sure. Next up, my favourite part of any patterns video, the dresses section. I know dresses don't scream autumn winter, I get that, but I like to wear my dresses all year round. I put roll necks under them, leggings under them, even if there's ice on the ground I will try and wear a dress in any way that I can because I just love wearing dresses. So yeah, it's all about the base layers. So first up I'm going to start with a pattern that oh, I can't recommend this pattern because the instructions are so bad but I've made it four times and I absolutely love the versions that I've made. But this is the McCall's M7973 and the instructions are possibly some of the worst I've ever seen. They've made this process of making this dress so, so confusing. I made my first one maybe about three years ago when I wasn't that experienced kind of in dressmaking and it was really, really difficult. It almost put me off sewing for life, to be honest, really bad. But. The dress itself is gorgeous. There's loads of different views. You've got a little ruffle collar or you've got like a collar like this, which is just a plain collar stand with a tie that you can tie in a little bow, which is super cute. You can have a plain facing as well. Different sleeve variations too. So you've got this little milkmaid sleeve version or this one, which I've made a couple of times, which is like a 
ruched sleeve. It's got ruching kind of in the centre or kind of the really nice traditional elasticated cuff balloon sleeve. I've hacked this one to have like a little ruffle and I've just top stitched some elastic to it which I think looks really really cute. But yes I've made lots of different versions. Have I made any more? I think that's it, I'm not sure. There might be another one somewhere. I love this pattern in terms of the design and the shape and everything, but the pattern itself, instructions wise, nightmare. So get it when it's half price or avoid it if you're a beginner, but I couldn't not include it because of the amount of times that I've made it. Clearly I just enjoy a really stressful sewing experience. <laughs> So next up is a far better sewing experience. It's the Tilly Buttons Lyra dress. As I said earlier, Tilly Buttons patterns have really, really nice instructions. They're always really good. Um, and I love this pattern. It's got a relaxed silhouette, um, but bust starts on the front. It's a shirt dress, which you can have either as a mini or a midi length with a gathered tiered skirt. It's got a little tie around the waist to cinch you in as well. And it's got really lovely puff sleeves too with an elasticated cuff super super comfy to wear and i love this i think it would be perfect for autumn winter because you could make this in a corduroy which would be lovely and warm or you could make it in sort of like a viscose twill which would be super soft and snuggly but you still get that lovely swish and drape of the viscose i was also thinking like an organza or chiffon version would be really nice for a night out obviously with layers underneath but i do think a shirt dress like this you can pop a roll neck underneath and it looks really really nice and then put a big belt over it but I love the long length on it. It means you can wear leggings or tights underneath and it will see you through the whole year round. The next three dress patterns are all Vicky Sews patterns because she is absolutely killing it with her dress patterns lately. There are some really, really good ones, especially in the newest collections. So this one is very, very new collection wise. I think it came out maybe two weeks ago. I bought it instantly. It is the Andy jumper dress. It's a relaxed fit midi jumper dress with a little collar um, and a little placket down the front but no buttons on it. See jumper dresses like this come back year after year. You could make it in something super super snuggly like maybe a mohair or a lightweight knit or you could go all out and do it in a really thick cable knit. I also think you could hack this to have a button placket going all the way down the front. That would look really, really nice. I know lots of people get put off buying Vicky Sews patterns because they only sell in single sizes. But honestly, as somebody who's normally spread out over four sizes because of my waist and hip difference, I have found their patterns really, really good. They're really thorough with their explanations on how to grade and things like that. So don't let that put you off. I know it's annoying, but that's why they've got a lower price point. So it's kind of worth it for the extra work that you have to do. The next pattern is the Aria Pinafore, which I haven't actually seen before. I only found it through kind of scrolling through their website the other day. It was right at the bottom. But I absolutely fell in love with this pattern. It's like a grown up version of a pinafore dress. I'm not a massive fan of pinafore dresses on me. I always struggle to find a style that kind of works in my wardrobe, but I love this one. It's kind of got a wrap front, a deep V, buttons at the front as well. It's a midi length, which is perfect because I don't really wear minis. A tie around the waist to cinch it in. It's really, really chic. I love it. When I had a look through the hashtags, I found lots of different versions. So you could really go to town with this one. There was a denim version, lots of leather versions, suede version, wool version. I also think there's loads of different ways that you could wear this. You could pop a shirt underneath for a night out, a roll neck just for every day and some boots, or you could do like t-shirt and trainers and make it super, super casual. And I definitely think I need one in my wardrobe. It is absolutely going to the top of my to sew list. Okay, and the last pattern through the whole video, this was a last minute edition because I saw it the other day on Instagram and absolutely fell in love with it. It is the Melinda dress. It's a bias cut, midi length dress with buttons down the front. It's got gathers on the bust rather than darts, which is really nice, gonna be really comfortable to wear. It's got these flouncy sleeves as well, which are really, really cute. It almost reminded me a little bit of the um, dress the mum wears in Freaky Friday, I'll pop a picture up. There's something about it that really reminded me of that dress, which is absolutely iconic and I love it. It would look amazing with boots or with heels for a night out, trainers when it's a little bit warmer. There's also a short sleeve version, which would make a really nice occasion wear dress if you wanted to make it in a satin. But I think a leopard print satin version of this dress would be beautiful. If you got this far, 
thank you so much for sticking with me because I know that I ramble a fair bit and that was actually a far longer list than I thought it was going to be but I really hope this video inspired you and gave you lots of ideas for your autumn winter sewing. If you did enjoy today's video please do subscribe I would love to have you back. I'm going to do another version of this video soon, but for occasion wear with Christmas parties and everything coming up, I can't believe I'm saying that in September, but as sewists, we need to be prepared, or if you're like me, have loads of ideas for last minute sewing. Keep an eye out for that video, it will be coming very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching and happy sewing. Bye!